first Denver Metro School District start the fall semester in just over a week. The plan's in place to protect your kids against the spread of COVID in the classroom. Today is back together Saturday at Broncos training camp with a range of events for fans of all ages. We're live from the UC Health training facility with all the fun. Plus, you may spot an unusual looking helmet on some players this season. The story behind the team's new headgear. Good morning and welcome to Denver 7 News. I'm Jessica Crawford and thank you so much for joining us on this Broncos Back Together Saturday. We are excited to bring you full coverage of that event throughout this newscast. But first, here are your other top stories for this weekend. The Arapahoe County Fair is happening right now and it's one of our longest running local fairs. It dates all the way back to 1906 and it features all the classics like carnival rides and delicious foods. Plus, you can enjoy competitions ranging from salsa and jam making to livestock. The Arapahoe County Fair runs through tomorrow. Aurora Fire and Rescue is hosting Camp Spark this weekend. It's an all-girls interactive camp aimed at introducing campers to the firefighting profession and inspiring them to consider careers in public safety. The National Fire Protection Association says in 2019, women made up less than 10% of all U.S. firefighters. And there is a free or pay what you can puppet show at Hudson Gardens this weekend. Audacious Theater is doing a pop-up performance of its original show Father Feather Bottoms Forgotten Fairy Tales. It's five fairy tales performed by two human actors and a whole lot of puppets. Donations will support Audacious Theater Productions, which will include a pop-up Halloween show for adults this fall. And you can catch this weekend's performance today and tomorrow at Hudson Gardens at 11 a.m. And breaking this morning, someone has beaten the odds and won the $1.2 billion dollars of the Mega Millions jackpot, the nationals, the nation's third largest lottery prize. Lottery officials say there is one winning ticket that was purchased in Illinois and the cash value option totals $742 million. This jackpot grew so large because no one had matched the game's six selected numbers since April 15th. That's 29 consecutive days without a jackpot winner. Taking a look outside right now in Empower Field, where we'll get to see our new Broncos play before we know it. But first, they have to get through training camp. Lisa, what's the weather looking like for players and fans? So far, so good. You know, we've had a couple of cool days out there, but today is going to be one of the warmer days for training camp. By about 10 o'clock, we'll be in the upper 70s. Sunny skies, not expecting any storms today. There through lunchtime, we'll be at about 85 degrees as practice gets wrapped up here by midday. It will be by this afternoon highs closer to 90 mid to upper 80s for us in Denver. But what a beautiful start to our Saturday sunny skies this morning winds out of the west uh, west at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Some neighborhoods still in the 50s. Arvada and Commerce City are right now at 58 59 in Centennial and 60 in Highlands Ranch. So things starting to warm up and dry out. We're going to get a few thunderstorms popping up in the mountains today and a very slim chance for some isolated activity across the plains. We'll take a closer look at your hour by hour future cast and what to expect if you're heading up to the mountains this afternoon. All right, Lisa, thank you. And today is the second Back Together Saturday, giving Colorado families the chance to see the Broncos in action ahead of the season, complete with family-friendly activities where fans can even interact with the players. Denver 7's Patrick Perez joins us live from UC Health Training Facility with a look at the lead-up to today's Back Together Saturday. Hey, good morning, Jessica. Yeah, if you can believe it, it's 7 o'clock in the morning, and we already have multiple people lined up here at the UC Health Training Center to watch the Broncos practice later this morning. I met a guy who's been here since midnight last night, and now I'm going to introduce you to two kids who've been here a few hours ago. Easton and Murray, come over here. Let's talk about the Broncos and back together Saturday, what this day means for you over here. Easton, stand right over there. How are you guys feeling this morning? You guys excited to be yeah. out here? Uh, I really like going to training camps and it's going to be fun. What about you, Mary? Are you excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait. Are there any specific players you guys are really looking forward to seeing this morning? Russell Wilson and Patrick Sertan. Yeah, what about you, Mary? Uh, really just painting Manning because he's my favorite player. <laughs> And so obviously Russell Wilson's a big deal right now because he's our new star quarterback came from the Seattle uh, Seahawks. How excited are you guys for him to join the team? Hopefully this means we'll make the playoff this season. I think he can help us win another Super Bowl. Oh yeah. What about you? I think he can do really good this year. Uh, make us win the Super Bowl. I know you guys are young. I think you're nine. E 
nine, you're ten. So it's been six straight playoffs that we have not made it, but hopefully this is going to be the year. Uh, clearly a lot of excitement from other fans today, maybe excited just as you guys are to meet these players. Really quickly, tell me about your jersey because I don't know if you guys can see this, but check out the way that this has kind of like some military attire. Tell me what this means to you. So I have an uncle in Kuwait and he's in the military and he got this custom made and the number is like his real actual uniform and on the back it has his real uniform on it And of too. course, look at that with Wilson right on the back. All right, Easton and Murray, thank you guys so much. So excited to see you guys this morning. Kudos to you for waking up so early to be here on a Saturday morning. I mean, that means a lot, but at your age, anything can happen. Uh, so the gates open here. Actually, they just uh, opened it about an hour for the parking lot. Nine o'clock, the gates open to the actual health center, the training facility. And then at 10 o'clock, that's when we get to watch the Broncos practice. It is going to be an exciting morning, Jessica. Patrick, thank you. Well, the coveted Broncos half price tickets are going on sale next week, and you can get them on Tuesday, August 2nd at 10 a.m., 2,000 half price tickets will be available per every home game and you can only buy four tickets to one game per household. Also, the tickets can't be resold or transferred and they'll only be for the buyer on the day of the game. If you get through on Tuesday, half price tickets will start at just $15. And there's even a chance for you to snag an amazing deal for the London game. Denver Broncos Charities launched the London Raffle Wednesday. It's a one of a kind experience for two that includes first class round trip airfare, accommodations for a five night stay in the heart of London, two lower level tickets to the Broncos Jaguars game on October 30th at Wembley Stadium behind the scenes access to practice and a few London excursions. All that for a package starting at $50. You can enter at broncos.com slash London raffle or in person during the Broncos preseason games against Dallas on August 13th or against Minnesota on August 27th. Well, maybe you thought about following the team to an away game. The Broncos are going to Las Vegas in October to take on the Raiders, and Allegiant Airlines has package deals with airfare, hotel, and game tickets. After the game, through the evening, through the restaurants and the casinos, throughout the resorts, jerseys of Raiders fans, the opponents fans, um, sitting, having a good time, and just enjoying this great game uh, that we love. And, and, you know, what, what we quite frankly think is uh, the best stadium on earth. The game is October 2nd, and you can learn more on Allegiance website. The team's new ownership will become official next month. NFL team owners will meet August 9th to vote on the $4.6 billion bid by the Walton Pinner Group. The group led by Walmart heir Rob Walton includes his daughter and son-in-law and members Melody Hobson and Condoleezza Rice. You might notice some of the players are wearing these on their heads. Well, they're called guardian caps. The NFL made them mandatory for all linemen, linebackers, and tight ends. Our sports team asked the players how they like that new headgear. They're kind of ugly, but... They're not necessarily the best fashion statement. I was thinking about wearing one, but I I decided not to. Kind of just makes my head feel heavy. Kind of feel like a bobblehead, man. I feel like it adds, like, well, it gives me negative five speed on Madden. We have a joke in the O-line o -line room. Uh, we won't be getting any good pictures in, in training camp with these on. <laughs> The NFL found that these caps reduce impact severity by at least 10%. Denver 7 is your home for Broncos training camp, and we have special coverage of today's session continuing through the 9 a.m. show. We'll see an updated COVID booster this September. The efficacy data is limited, but the updated shot is expected to be stronger against the Omicron subvariant BA5. It's become the most dominant strain of the virus in the U.S. and much of the world. Right now, only Americans 50 and over and the immunocompromised are eligible for a second booster. The new school year is approaching quickly, and like last year, COVID is going to be top of mind for many people as students return to the classroom. Unlike last year, though, vaccines are available for all school-age children. But a new study from the Kaiser Family Foundation shows more than 4 in 10 parents of children under 5 do not plan on getting their child vaccinated. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon talks with parents on both sides of the issue and a pediatrician who's not shocked by the results of the study. Say hi, I'm Izzy B. Can you wave hi? While kids play at the park. <laughs> Daddy loves you. Okay, go play. Parents like Matthew Hickney are making decisions for their future. You know, she's spinning around over there. She just started talking and using complete sentences, so we're really excited. 
What's more exciting for this dad, getting his two-year-old daughter vaccinated against COVID-19 just months ago? The science behind vaccination is very, very sharp. It, it's, it's tough to deny it. But a national survey says he's one of a small percentage of parents of kids between six months to four years old who have gotten their child vaccinated already since the FDA authorized two COVID vaccines for that age range in June. We came to the conclusion that um, COVID has a very good survival rate, especially for the kiddos. Meanwhile, this mom wanted to remain anonymous when talking with us because she thinks her opinion isn't popular. We don't vaccinate at all. Children's Hospital Colorado says Colorado has the lowest vaccination rate in the entire country when it comes to general vaccines. If I go to the doctor, they only have one standard for everyone, one size fits all vaccine program for every single kiddo. For the ones who are feeling more hesitant, there's definitely been you know, a few different you know, patterns. Those patterns are seen by Dr. Lucas Henderson, a pediatrician, and their concerns about side effects, long-term effects, and the idea that kids aren't as affected by the virus, which he says isn't necessarily true. The kids serve as a, a reservoir that may not have had you know, as much exposure to um, the virus. He talks parents through their safety concerns and believes in the science behind the vaccine. The reward outweighs the risk. Um, the risks are not very high at all. And back at the park, Hickney says his decision for his daughter oh, is about more than just his family. You know, we live in a society and I think we have a responsibility to each other and um, yeah. She's perfectly fine. A debate that keeps on going while the pandemic presses on too. It is important to note that most of the parents in the Kaiser study have not spoken to their pediatrician or other health care provider about getting the vaccine for their child. It makes Dr. Henderson hopeful that these numbers will start to change over the next few months. Colorado school districts are laying out their plans to prevent the spread of COVID in the classroom. At Aurora Public Schools, students and staff who test positive will be required to isolate for five days. Students who develop symptoms will be asked to stay home. Masks will not be required on buses or in classrooms. Denver Public Schools tells us its guidance will be the same as the end of last school year. Students will not be required to, to wear masks, but they are highly encouraged. Students and teachers who test positive will be asked to isolate for five days after after first experiencing symptoms. I really believe what you give is what you get back. How this week's Denver 7 Everyday Hero not only gives guests at Invent HQ access to a new creative outlet, but also the confidence to try new things and enjoy learning along the way. RTD driving home their mission to become more environmentally friendly. The new effort beginning Monday to cut carbon emissions and your gas bill.